Imagine being able to control machines with a flick of your wrist, a pinch of your fingers, or perhaps by tilting your head. It sounds like science fiction, but in fact, NTU researchers are turning this into reality. The university's new high-tech pilot laboratory can quickly prototype what's called ultra-thin stretchable electronics. And these can be worn on the legs, wrist or head to detect bioelectric signals from the skin, muscles and organs. The signals are then transmitted to let users control robots or other electronic devices. Well, here to share more with us tonight is Professor Chen Xiaodong, President's Chair in Materials, Science and Engineering, as well as Director of the Innovative Center for Flexible Devices at NTU. Professor Chen, welcome to the show. Now, you've got a lot on the table there. You brought in uh, these ultra-thin <laughs> stretchable electronics, I understand, and they're also known as soft electronics first. What does soft electronics mean and, and, and what are they made of? Okay, let me tell you, you know, from the term mm -hmm. soft itself can give you some information mm -hmm. already about this kind of soft electronic device. It means such kind of device can be bent, can stretch and like this way. Mm -hmm. So this allow you to be really compliant with any kind of shape you want. So maybe you can feel and touch it, how this kind of device may look like for this mm, kind of soft yes. electronics. Right, so it, it's embedded into this very flexible material. Yes. And I mean, I, I suppose it means that you can really shape this into almost any, any shape that you want. Ideally, yes. Right. Okay. But I, I must say, you know, the, a lot of this kind of the materials developments in this direction yeah. to make this kind of atrocin electrodes and device. Mm. Maybe I can give an example of this one. So this is really our invention yeah. to make this kind of the metal can be bent, mm -hmm. can be stretched, mm. can be folded and in this shape. In fact, please bear in mind, the thickness of this sample, these electrodes, just about 1 to 20 micrometer. It's right. one tenth of our human hair in terms of diameter. So this is so see. thin. Yeah. So tell us, I mean, we, we said this in the story earlier that the transmission is by bioelectric signals and that can be, those signals can be sent from the skin, from muscles, from organs as well. If you can explain in layman's terms, as simply as you can for our audience, what does that, how does it do that? Okay, so in fact, you know, for human, right, we are just kind of for the signal transport. But in fact, the magnet behind is kind of electricity transport. Yeah. And then what this device, because made by this kind of soft electrodes, allow to capture this kind of signals from the skin surface mm. or from organ, mm. allow you to take this kind of status of your health care, take example mm. in this case. So yeah. even minor changes on the skin surface, as an example, can be picked up. Exactly. By, the, by this stretchable material. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I think one of the fundamental points is uh, because this electrode is such a thing, mm. can, plan, can really comply with this kind of uh, tissue. Because you can see our tissue is always bent. Mm. Right. For traditional, this mm. kind of uh, TCB bond, bond uh, this kind of device, is kind of rigid. Mm. They cannot comply with the shape it won't change. Okay. But for mm. our sub electron device, they can. So that's why they can get reliable data. Mm. Well, well that's, that's the next question, because you've made it so pliable and complex. Uh, why create such uh, material? Uh, what is the main benefit for, for people? Oh, yeah. So, in fact, there are many applications mm. for such a flexible device. So, one of our key emphasizes is about healthcare related. Ah. So, one of the reasons why for healthcare, but of course, you know, one of the reasons for Singapore, by 2030, one out of four out of one out of four people could be 65 years old. Yeah. So that means we're going to increase our health care cost. Yep. So for such a flexible device, can allow our people stay at home to do your health care monitoring in more comfortable way and also more high precise data. What about more affordable way? So you can see for traditional mm -hmm. this kind of small space device, mm -hmm. it's rigid, mm -hmm. it's very heavy. But just now I mentioned already, mm. the thickness of a sample is one tenth of hair diameter. It's even one hundredth of this traditional this kind of device. Mm. So it will be much lighter mm. and also can be stretched. Mm. So once you wear it, it's like this kind of paste or wear on clothes. So you feel comfortable. So that's why 
it will allow many people to bet. Mm. It's the first point. The second point, I say important, can really reduce the people stay in hospital, mm. right? So they can go back at home for home-based health care. But right. of course... And, and that is to monitor... It's for monitoring purposes, monitoring purpose. correct? Yes. Okay, so they would theoretically wear maybe a, a garment which, which has this stretchable yes. uh, uh, sort of a system in it, the electronics within it, and because it's covering a wider surface area on that person's, on the patient's body, you, the, the doctor or the healthcare provider is getting more information, exactly. more accurate information as well. Uh, it would be good if, if it if the cost can also be kept down, because as you say, we are a super aging society, lots of us getting older. Uh, it also works together with robots and electronic devices. Can you explain to us a little bit about that? How we'll do that? Okay, so for a robot or electronic device, you know, in fact, we have, my group have many kind of experience or mm -hmm. work on this direction. So it means how we connect this kind of uh, human signals mm. with robot because a lot of disabled person. So they lose, they lose this kind of uh, limb. Then we can use the kind of uh, prosthetics to link with the human body. Mm. Ah. But now our flexible mm. device, because it's a soft, flexible, stretchable, we can get high resolution data. Coupled with artificial intelligence, because this is one of NTU expertise as well, then we can really get this kind of high resolution data from human right. to control the prosthetics. So this will mm. give you one example. Right, so merging several technologies together exactly, as well. Exactly. Ah, okay, okay, there's a lot of potential. Um, mm. How far are you from taking such a project, a product to the market? I hope it will be tomorrow. <laughs> but unfortunately, it takes a bit longer mm -hmm. time as well yeah. because mm -hmm. we have a few challenges now we need to address. First one, although we can fabricate in a lab scale, mm. but in fact, not enough for our industry and also health care this can provide to, to take it. The reason is you make sure all device device variations be minimal yeah. and also reliable. So that's why in the last three years, with the support of NTU, NIF, and also ASTAR, we just built this kind of pipeline, this kind of semi-intensive scale lab in mm. NTU. Mm. So this allows us to do this kind of rapid prototyping, as you see now, why we can, any device I can fabricate one day, I can show you already. Right. Yeah. So you, you were talking earlier, uh, Professor Chen, about how thin these, uh, you know, stretchable electronics are. I mean, it really is. It's paper, it's paper thin. Even thinner than paper. Yeah, it's even slimmer than paper. But what about it, the resilience of it? I mean, how, how are you able to test how strong it is, as an example? I mean, okay. what are the biggest sort of downsides? So this will depend on your application, right? Yeah. So you can see a lot of our uh, data capturing based this kind of traditional CMOS. So that's why it's really used for a long time. Right. But for sensor element parts, soft sensor parts, must use our development. Mm. So in this case, if this sensor is used for too long time, well, we can make money, right? Yes. But this is not the reason behind. The reason behind is we can tailor for different applications. For example, for our normal people, you wear it just one day. Mm. You can take off. The next day, get a new one. Mm. So that's why you don't worry about this kind of, it's also based on this kind of polymer base. Right. Low cost compared mm. with many other devices. So this is one point. But of course, once implant in body. So that's why we count, now we can tell it to 14 days. So it means you do this kind of surgery there inside. After 14 days, they automatically biodegrade already. Mm -hmm. So that's why you, need, you do need to do another surgery. Mm -hmm. So this is also beautiful of this research as right. well. Such potential, yeah. Prof Chen. I uh, wish you all the best in that yeah. and hope to see it uh, being used for good in, in very soon. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> well, Professor you. Chen Siokdong joining us today. He is the President's Chair in Materials Science and Engineering and Director of Innovative Centre for Flexible Devices at NTU.